Friends, this is must-see TV. It all comes down to one game. The winner of tonight's ball game advances to the 1996 World Series to take on the New York Yankees. It has been a fantastic series to this point. Hello and welcome to The Architect. Along with John Scherholz, our special guest, the Hall of Fame general manager, team president, uh, vice chair emeritus of the Atlanta Braves. He's had all the titles that he can handle. Uh, he's sitting here ready to share insights into the 1996 National League Championship Series. And John, uh, it was a, a terrific year, obviously, in 95, you win the World Championship, you've got parades, you've got, uh, I'm sure you had to worry at some point about, well, we got to get ready for 96 eventually. They're still going to have another season. Just because we won the World Championship doesn't mean it's all over. How long did the hangover last? A uh, reasonable length, I'd say. I mean, there was, it was worthwhile celebration to have and joyfulness that we all shared in. Everybody around the organization shared in that. And when sooner or later, it's time to get back to work. And the great thing about our guys, and again, the leader, Bobby Cox, and his coaching staff saw to it that when the first day in the spring training that our guys show up, they're ready to roll. They're ready to get back to work. They're ready to try to be the champions of the league again and be world champions again the following year. Did you feel like you needed to somehow improve the club? What was your, your posture in terms of roster moves and trades in the offseason? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you always, every general manager looks for a piece like Mike Devereaux we talked about earlier. Uh, you find a guy like that you believe fits right in and, and fills the void that you need or a weakness that you might have or strengthens you better than you were. And uh, that's what you do. That's, that's what your job is, to structure the roster so that when the manager has to make moves, he's got the right kind of talent and the right person to make that move with. Interesting that you put those together, the right talent and the right type of person, because both are serious considerations, aren't they? They are very serious considerations. You, you go out to get a guy who has good talent, uh, you don't know his makeup well enough, uh, you could be burned. You go out and get a guy who has good talent or, or not, maybe not quite as good a talent as the, as the dominant player, but his makeup is known to be great. He's a team player, he's a professional, he's a winner, and that's the guy you want wearing your uniform when you get to the playoffs. Did you almost feel like your team was turning into a machine now, especially as you watched 96 unfold? and you didn't really have any noticeable hangover, at least in terms of the regular season, win 96 games, and John Smoltz wins the Cy Young, and you just cruise through, win the division by eight games over Montreal. So it was just business as usual, it felt. Did you start to feel like, well, this is just who these, these guys are? It's, it, is, it is who they were, and, and they were not machine-like, but they were, had the, the rhythm of a machine, and they were constant, and they picked each other up, and where there was a weakness, somebody stepped in and made a strength out of it. Uh, that's what our team did, that's what our scouts did to find players to help us get stronger, and that's what you need to do if you're going to continue to make steps forward each and every year and try to be world champions as often as you can be. So you make it all the way to the playoffs, surprising nobody, and then you face the Dodgers, first two games in L.A., and they couldn't do a thing. They do, you just, your team just swept them in three games, and the Dodgers could barely score a run. Into left field, Andrew Jones. They're going back to the National League Championship Series. By that time on this streak that we're talking about, starting back in 1991, our guys had become used to competing, winning, surviving, winning again, and that's what they did. And they, they believed they had the ability to do it anytime they took the field, especially in big playoff series. They just went out there with Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox and said, we'll, we'll see if this is good enough. That usually is pretty, <laughs> pretty much good enough. That's, do you ever look back and say, I mean, I know you acquired some of these guys, and, and so there were reasons they didn't just like drop out of the sky. But nonetheless, no matter how good a general manager is or a, a talent evaluator, when you look back at some of these Braves rosters, including those, those big three right there, and you think, how could we have gotten all those guys on one team together? How, how did that happen? Well, uh, yeah, there are stories behind those, and I'm happy to tell them to you sometime, but uh, we were able to get the players we needed, and, and uh, they filled the gaps when we needed to fill them. Uh, the guys who were part of this organization from the beginning till the last of the World Series that we played in um, were all valuable. And they weren't machine-like, but in a good way. They're confident with each other and with the guy playing next to them and the pitchers that were on the mound and the manager, of course, in the dugout. Were you thinking in 96, we have the best team in baseball again, we're going to win back-to-back -back World Series? Absolutely, I did. I did. It, it, you know, it wasn't cockiness 
or overconfidence at all. But it was a really good team. It continued to show they were really good players who could come up big in big game situations. And they did it consistently. And, uh, you know, yeah, I was confident. Let me ask you about the, the matchup with the Cardinals and the NLCS. How did you feel like uh, the two teams matched up against one another? Well, you know, the Cardinals were, were at the end of the year, were, play, were playing great baseball. I mean, they really were. And so it's never easy. You know, the Cardinals' legacy, the, the organizational legacy, their, their history and all of that, uh, you know, you, never, you can't take anything for granted. You can't just say, oh, well, we, we're, we're hot and we're going to take, take on anybody who shows up in the other dugout. Uh, that, was, that was a different feeling in that series. So game one, uh, the Braves take it 4-2 to two behind John Smoltz. So that's, that's a great start for the Braves. Then you come to game two, where once again at home, the Braves fall to the Cardinals 8-3. to three. So they did what every team wants to do when they go in sure. for the first two games of a best of seven, and that is steal one of the two. They go home, they stay hot. Game three, Cardinals take it 3-2 to go up in the series. Game four, Cardinals take it 4-3. All these close one-run games, very well played, tight pitching, good pitching. But the Braves are suddenly looking around, and it's three games to one. With right. three games to play, including one more in St. Louis. What did you think? It didn't feel good. It didn't feel it didn't feel like things were going the way we thought they would go, uh, and and that was a little off-putting for everybody. But you know, we had to play another game, and if we had a chance to win that game, then we have a chance to play another game and try to win that game. So that was the the mindset that we all had and had to have going forward from that point on. I'm sure you wouldn't have been feeling. Uh, just a little off or a little disappointed or concerned if you didn't have in game five John Smoltz scheduled to pitch then go home game six Greg Maddox scheduled to pitch for the Braves and in game seven Tom Glavin is scheduled to pitch for the Braves so uh, Braves may have been down three to one but I bet nobody felt like they were way behind I, I know the general manager didn't feel that way and I know the manager didn't feel that way there was a lot of confidence that we still had give us the chance to put one of those guys on the mound with a ball in their hand and take it to the next guy to take us to the next game and so on and so forth. And that's the confidence that we had in those guys. Braves trying to become the first team in NLCS history. Be down three games to one in a best of seven series. Come back and win it. The Cardinals ran into Greg Maddox in game six in Atlanta and he beat them three to yeah. one. And then game seven happens and Tom Glavin gets the start for the Braves and Right away in the first inning, the Braves load the bases for Tom Glavin at the plate. And it's always a good thing when the pitcher comes up to the plate in the first inning anyway. Always a good thing when the pitcher comes up who was once a hockey player and was drafted by the NHL because he was such an outstanding hockey player and a competitor and has eye-hand coordination and likes to take batting practice. And Tommy was up there at the right time. Into left field. Can't, can't get it. That will empty the bases. Lavin heads for third. Six to nothing Atlanta. You know, we really haven't even talked through uh, these episodes, The Architect, much about the hitting abilities of, of your pitchers, but the Braves were so well known, and those guys were so competitive against each other, they took a lot of pride in their hitting, and they helped themselves with a lot of those gaudy one-loss records that the Braves forged and those future Hall of Fame pitchers forged were due to their own work with the bat. Yeah, they were, they, they, they were professional about it. Uh, they had confidence in their ability, and they believed in themselves when they were up to the plate or on the mound. Well, the Braves jumped out, obviously, to a, a, a great start. They go on to win Game 7 by a final of 15 to nothing. That, despite the fact that you had lost Jeff Blauser early in the game to a hit batsman, he was not going to be able to play the rest of the NLCS, uh, which was almost over anyway, or in the World Series, and did not play in the World Series. So I want to ask you about Blauser here in a moment, but it's worth noting the 15 to nothing uh, victory by the Braves in that game, the largest margin of victory in a shutout in Major League Baseball postseason history, breaking the record the Braves had set two games before where they won 14 to nothing. Here comes Lemke. He'll score. Over to third is Jones. Safe. It gets away. Chipper Jones will score, and it's 8 0 Atlanta. Lopez, deep center. Nothing Atlanta. Hit a ton to left. 13 to nothing Atlanta. McGriff gets into on the deep right field. Mabry back. 15 to nothing Atlanta. 
That's pretty incredible, though, to have, to have a couple of games like that, and it's certainly easy on the, the uh, cardiac situation for any of the rest of us who are watching the games. It is. Oh, Judah Blouser, that hit him on the hand, and it looked like the right hand or the right elbow is plumped by an inside fastball. Blouser going down. Were, were you concerned? Now you you had won the National yeah. League Championship Series, but were you, were you concerned that that was a big loss, or did you think you had the people it on the roster? It was a big loss help? for me. Jeff Jeff was a quiet guy, but tough as nails competitor. I mean, you could rely on him making the plays, not fancy uh, or anything like that, but he would make the plays. Uh, he would give everybody confidence around him, the pitchers especially, everybody else on the team. He knew how to play the game. He was smart, intellectual. And he played it very, very well. And when we lost him with that, with that busted wrist, uh, it was tough. But you know, you, you, that you have to fill in. Into center. Here comes Atlanta, New York. The Atlanta Braves were down three games to one. They rallied to win games five, six, and seven. And they are headed back to the World Series to try and repeat. Well, you win the fourth pennant in the last five completed season, and the dominance would continue throughout the rest of the 90s. That's just 96. We've got one more to go. The 1999 National League Championship Series is coming up, and I'm sure you and I are both looking forward to talking about that one. A lot of talent in that Braves-Mets series, and that'll be the final episode in this round, the National League Championship Series round of The Architect. John, thanks for your time again. Thank you, Jim. And thank you for watching here on The Architect.